Hello friends, welcome back to my studio, I hope you're well. It is going to be about 36 degrees here today, very hot. I think it's about 96, 97 Fahrenheit. So it's going to get too hot in here very quickly to paint because the acrylic paint dries very fast. You can use, which I sometimes do when it gets really hot, a drying retarder like this Matisse product. Also the golden glazing liquid will retard the drying time. So I might get, get those out, I'll see how I go. What I'm wanting to do is, I haven't done anything on this piece, uh, the camera's a bit high, uh, for a while. So I thought I'd get um, going on that again. And a couple of things before I do. Thank you so much to Sarah and Marianne for your tips about the tins that the, the glass jars with the metal lids that were sticking. You suggested to use an oil like a Vaseline or coconut oil or lip balm. So I've put some coconut oil on and I'll see, so far it looks like it's gonna work an absolute treat. So thank you very much. We also came across this book in a secondhand store of Turner's work when there was an exhibition at the National Gallery of Australia, which is in Canberra. This is the program, if you like, that went along with the exhibition. Uh, once the exhibitions are done, you can't really get these books anymore. So this was a 1996 exhibition that happened. And so I'm really pleased, I absolutely love Turner's work. He was a master, it's why they have named Turner's Yellow after him with his, his use of yellow and just his mastery of watercolour. And if any of you get a chance to see the movie that was made of him, I would highly recommend. It's a fabulous movie showing the passion of the man and how dedicated he was to his practice very inspiring indeed so when i talk about where i want to take my work getting more subtle this is an image here that uh, displays that really really well and that's something that he you know i'm not saying i'm about to be turner at all but his mastery of the subtlety and the power um, in his work is, you know, I think there's so many of us that um, strive to emulate his skill and, and vision. The other thing that's come up recently, as I said last week about the Annie Sloan colours, I've been watching a lot of her YouTube tutorials and one of them was about the whole genre of this type of paint application. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I'll put it on the screen and it's become quite fashionable and it's something that I think would work really, really well trying to achieve that more subtleness of application of paint. And so what she says, and perhaps I'll be able to link the video below in the description, she talks about applying paint with cardboard. I thought I would give that a go today. I've got lots of scraps of cardboard. So I thought I'd start to go over this piece in that manner, applying the paint in that manner and I'm not sure whether I'll stick so much with this palette or I'm really so passionate about this new colour palette that I've developed very recently. So I think this painting will transition now from the Giorgio O'Keefe colour palette more into these pastels and things that I'm enjoying so much. So I'm going to stop talking now and get on to painting. Please let me know, do you prefer a voiceover as I'm painting, explaining what I'm doing and what I'm thinking, or do you like to just chill out, sit back and listen to the music? Uh, let me know, I'm happy to do perhaps two different versions each time I do a time-lapse painting so you can have your pick. But yeah, let me know what your preference is. And so today I'm just going to paint. I feel like I've talked a lot in recent vlogs, so I'm just going to paint, there'll be no voiceover with this one. I hope you enjoy seeing this coming together or taking at least the next, next stages in its development.
it's super hot in here now and the paint is starting to be sticky on the brush and I don't want to use the drying retarder because I do like the fact that the acrylic dries it's what I really love about using acrylic compared to oils that it will dry very quickly and yeah it's just when it's at that sticky point it won't come off the brush properly it's it's a sign that it's too hot in here my hot tip for this week is to keep your water in a in a bottle there's less likely a chance to get your paintbrush in it if you know you know <laughs> so how's this coming um loving lots of it the sky i was referencing this sketch that i showed you last week and the sky is far too busy i think that's what i got trapped into in some of the older landscape paintings so it's sticky dry rather than dry proper dry so when it is dry i will come in i think and calm the sky down a little bit more like this one here still needs to have vitality but yeah i think it's just a little bit too patchy but there's lots of really lovely lovely bits going on in the bottom i it was all looking all the same when i was using that cardboard and it did deliver the paint quite well but the cardboard got very wet very quick and i found using i went on to this bowl scraper which is a cooking item for scraping out your ingredients in the bowl this worked much better i think than the cardboard i wouldn't bother with the cardboard next time and with this i was able to really thin the paint out because i'm still wanting to keep the layers that are going on in the background you want uh, to create, be able to create depth with that oh. Whew. maybe it'll work as a fan for me <laughs> oh i'm not a fan of summer okay um what was i saying yeah, it was all very much the same. I was able to get some transparency using the bowl scraper. And then I squirted the bottom area here with some water, just a regular squirty bottle. That's just water every time you see me using that. And it gave some really lovely texture. It broke up the paint and it was all mottled. And yeah, it really started to come alive as a landscape and a difference between the land and the and the sky i did also try to not resolve this too quickly i was playing around you saw me use a cake decorators spatula cooking spatula just to kind of i've had it for ages never really used it so i was like let's see what this does and it made some interesting marks so yeah very different to the normal size spatula that that I use so that was fun and I think it's important to show you that this had two days painting on it before I began today and then that's another another layer there's bits of it that are really coming together and there's bits that need a lot more work I think it's important with this time lapse and it's all sped up and you think oh people are getting paintings done in hours and you know, some paintings do come together very quickly, but I, the point I'm making is to give yourself time with your work and it doesn't have to be resolved in a day or a month even. <laughs> give yourself a year, why not? Like it's your work and, and, and part of, surely part, most of the fun is in the creating, not in the final result. So that's enough from me today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely week and I'll see you next week. Bye.